Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And man, I want to thank each of you for joining with us for our daily Bible study coming from Charlene's Outreach Ministries. We have a great lesson for today. Samson and Delilah. Samson and Delilah. Amen. As I told you, as I spoke earlier, we will be doing Samson throughout this week. So we have another day, one more day of Samson to complete this lesson. And we're going to get ready and move into our lesson. But first, we're going to have prayer. Dear God in heaven, we thank you, Father. We thank you for all the many blessings that you bestow upon us. We thank you for making a way out of nowhere. We thank you for leading and guiding us in your true path of righteousness, Father. Lord, you are our light and our shining arm, and whom shall we fear? In Jesus' name we do pray. Lord, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We thank you for all that you have done, you is doing, and you shall do in each of our life, Father. Lord, as we go into your word, Father, we pray that you would open our eyes that we see, our ears that we hear, and give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding standing from on high as we study and meditate on your word, Father. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. As we said, our lesson is Samson and Delilah, and it's uh, coming from Judges 16, verses 1 to 21. And verse 1 through 3 reads, Then went Samson to Gaza, and saw the harlot, and went in unto her. And it was told the Gezerites, saying, the Gezites, saying, Samson is come hither. And they compassed him in and laid wait for him all night in the gate of the city and were quiet all the night, saying, in the morning when it is day, we shall kill him. And Samson lay till midnight and arose at midnight and took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts, and went away with them, bar and all, and put them upon his shoulder, and carried them up to the top of an hill that is before Hebron. Now, Samson comes out again, and he goes again after a Philistine lady. He has a fancy for the Philistine. So with that being said, it is trouble, uh, but in this, God, as I said, God works all things for the good, for the glory that is to be. Amen. Commentary said, hitherto, Samson's character has appeared glorious, though uncommon in this chapter. We find him behaving in so weak a manner that many questions whether or not he were a godly man, but the apostle has determined this in Hebrews 11 and 32 by adverting to the doctrines and examples of scripture, the artifacts of Satan, the deceitfulness of the human heart, and the method in which the Lord frequently deals with his people. We may learn useful lessons from this history at which needlessly stumble while others cave, cavil and object, the peculiar time in which Samson lived may account for many things which, if done in our times and without the special appointment of heaven, would be highly criminal. And there might have been in him many exercises of pity, of pity which, if recorded, would have reflected a different light upon his character, observed Samson's danger, on that all who indulge their sensual appetites in drunkenness or any fleshly lust would see themselves thus surra surround surrounded, way laid, and marked for ruin by their spiritual enemies. The faster they sleep, the more secure they feel, the greater their danger. We hope it was with a pious resolution not to return to his sin that he rose under a fear of the danger he was in. Can I be safe under this guilt? It was bad that he lay down without such checks, but it would have been worse if he had laid still under them. 
as we look at that, as uh, what they're saying is, you know, Samson, like I say, had a fancy for the Philistines' women, uh, and so he continued to run after them. But he still loved God. He still had a love for God. And with that being said, his flush, he did things that he shouldn't have by going into the Philistine woman and staying with her. And But yet and still, God worked through him in these situations. As we look at verses 4 through 17, we will speak to it as we go. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistine came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and we will give thee, every one of us, 1,100 pieces of silver. Well, now her being a Philistine herself, she, and being a woman of uh, specialty, would be going after the money. That was her duty. That's what she was about, to go after the money. And so with them offering her a, such a large sum, she was going to try to do what it took to get the money from the, from the Philistines. Verse 6 says, And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lies, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. You would think with her asking this kind of a question that he would think that, you know, she got something up that ain't right. But because his desire was after the Philistine woman, and uh, he had now picked up a fancy with Delilah, uh, he was determined to stick with this woman. And Delilah said to Samson, tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lies. She, she's trying to find out how he gets to be so strong. Verse 7 says, and Samson said unto her, if thou bind me with seven green widths that were never dried, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Then the lords of the Philistine brought up to her seven green with which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Now there were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber. He couldn't hear nobody. He couldn't hear the breathing. He couldn't hear nothing. Samson was really enticed with this Delilah, is all I can say. And she said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee. Samson, and he break the wits, and as a thread of tow is broken, when it torches the fire, so his strength was not known. Now, we point at uh, Samson and his d desire for this woman, but there are still people today, and many of us has went through this in our life, that we have uh, a fail for someone uh, and, and, and fell in love with someone and cared for someone that was not good for us. But we hung on till it was never about till the dear end before we realized we had to turn it loose. Amen. Verse 10 says, And the Lord said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast marked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound. What is your weakness? And he said to her, verse 11, if thou bind my, me fast and with new ropes that never were uh, occupied, then shall I be weak. And say, now if you if you bind me with some new ropes, you can you can, I, 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 you can do whatever you want them to me because I can't do nothing. Well, even the uh, Philistines should have remembered that uh, that was not the case because he had they had put new ropes on him when. When the uh, 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 Israelites brought him to uh, uh, to the Philistines, and he had broke the the, the 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 ropes, but they didn't look at it like that. And he said, "Then shall I be weak and be as another man?" Then I therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith, and said unto him, "The Philistines be upon thee, Samson." And they were liars in wait, 
abiding in the chamber. They still in the chamber. They still hiding out and went right where he is, but he don't know it. I, I don't understand that. It must be a mighty big house and they must have been really quiet. And he break them from off his arms like a thread. And Delilah said unto Samson, Here the two, thou hast mocked me and told me lies. And she's upset because he didn't lie to her when she's trying to hurt him. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web, and she fastened it with the pen and said unto him, The Philistine be upon thee, Samson. And he awakened out of his sleep and went away with the pen of the bean and with the web. All of it was in his head, and he went away with it as if she, nothing had been done. Verse 15 says, and, he said unto him, and she said unto him, How canst thou say I love thee when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lies. I wonder, did he ever know that the man was there? It doesn't say that he knew that the man was there, but, you know, each time you got these men that's hiding out, and when he jumps up, uh, he still got his strength, and so they goes away. So I wonder, do they, do they, re do she realize, or do he realize uh, that they're there? Verse 16 said, it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. She continued and continued on him about what is, where is your strength? How is you strong like this? Until he finally gave in. Verse 17, that he told her all his heart and said unto her, there has not come a razor upon my head. For I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. I do not understand why he never got the message that she was trying to destroy him, but he never got it. Commentary says Samson had been more than once brought into mischief and danger by the love of women. Yet he would not take warning, but is again taken in the same snare. And this third time is fatal. Litigiousness is one of the things that take away the heart. This is deep pit into which many have fallen, but from which few have escaped. And those by a miracle of mercy with the loss of reputation and usefulness of almost all except their souls, the anguish of the suffering is 10,000 times greater than all the pleasure of sin. But they yet still, uh, when they have a desire and a yearning. And one thing that came to my spirit while I was reading and thinking on this, one, um, I would imagine that the Philistine women were dressing and appearing themselves in a different manner than the Jewish women was. And so in that being said, he was uh, 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 enticed by their apparel and the way they looked and the way they dressed and the way they carried themselves. And so he wanted one of them more than he wanted the uh, Jewish women. Verse 18 to 21 says, And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he has assured me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistine came up into, unto her and brought money in their hand, and she made him sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man and he, she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head, and she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And he said, The Philistine be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. 
He didn't know that he had messed up when he truly told her the information, the one of the main things that made him different than all others. Amen. Verse 21, but the Philistine took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass. And he did grind in the prison house. You know, many people are destroyed uh, due to lust and desire and falling after what uh, we want and lust after. Amen. Commentary says, see the fatal effects of false security. Satan ruins men and women by flattering them into a good opinion of their own safety. And so bringing them to, to mind nothing and fearing nothing, and then he robs them of their strength and honor and leads them captive, captive at his will. When we sleep, our spiritual enemies do not. Samson's eyes were the inlets of his sin in Judges 16 and 1, and now his punishment begins here, begin there. Now the Philistine blinded him. He had time to remember how his own lust had before blinded him. The best way to preserve the eyes is to turn them away from beholding vanity. Take warning by his fall carefully to watch against the fleshly lust. For all our glory is gone and our defense departed from us when our separation to God as spiritual Nazarites is profane. We must not profane ourselves and allow uh, uh, us to be uh, brought under the subjection of sin that will damage and destroy our spiritual life. Amen. This is a wonderful and powerful lesson. I pray you meditate on this lesson and have a great and blessed day. God bless you.